All right, everyone, welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. Today we have a game in the Division A East with Jailmate versus the UCF Death, UCF Death Knights. It's going to give me some trouble. I'm Fallendrith here uh, with just myself tonight and maybe a, black, a bright wing plushie behind me, but hoping to see some good games. Uh, these teams are kind of in the middle of the Division A East right now with Jailmate sitting at fourth place with uh, 12 points and the Death Knights sitting at... Ninth place with six points. So both of these teams uh, have a pretty high parity. Like I think the rest of the league at this point on Stukov. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see some ban action there. I think uh, if I look, remember correctly, Jailbait has a pretty good win record, win rate on Stukov as well. So their Stukov player, I think it it varies from game to game. I believe we have. I think we have Storm Killer with us today. So, you know, either way, uh, Jailbait has won most of the games on Stukov. It looks like they've won, I think, six out of the seven last the uh, games on the on that hero. So, we'll see if they want to try to leave that up for a first pick. Go ahead and ban out Phoenix. Oh, sorry, we are playing on Infirm. I right, forgot to mention that. So, Phoenix, pretty standard ban at this point. It's just not no one really wanting to deal with his like really constant safe auto attacking, um, and of course, no one wants to get tilted by the teleport. Yaris gets banned away as well on Infernal Shrines. Again, one of the more highly contested tanks in the in the league right now. Not so sure about the division, but I know that overall in the Nexus Gaming series, Yaris is a pretty highly contested pick. We'll see if Jailbait wants to go for their, yep, their traditional Stukov in the beginning of the, the draft phase. Let's see what, what Death Knights want to go with uh, against that. Hanzo, okay, Hanzo picked up for, again, some nice solid uh, minion clear on the shrines. Check and chat real quick. Alright everyone, welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. All right, it looks like the Death Knights will pick up Johanna as well. Interesting, uh, as a first pick, no one on the side of Jailbait has, you know, any sort of auto attack damage yet. We'll see if they want to opt into some auto attack damage for their uh, their their DPS now that Johanna has been picked. Would expect Jailbait to go. I'm not really sure. I haven't seen these teams play too much. So, I, you know, they favor my Ev as well, along with Stukov, so I can definitely see them going into the sort of, you know, zone control uh, my Ev, uh composition. They've also shown that they play Blaze a little bit, uh, Greyman as well. I think I'd like to see them pick up uh, a, a tank and another DPS and a DPS here, just so that they have a solid three-man going into the final two uh, band picks. Having that, you know, solid composition before having your... Uh, Last two picks gives a lot of flexibility. <laughs> they do go into exactly my and Blaze. Uh, I like that a lot. That's a lot of zone control on the uh, the shrines. Blaze has a tendency to just kind of like passively burn down those minions while he's fighting. So definitely like a subtle advantage if the uh, other team isn't careful uh, and isn't really paying attention to Blaze there. Yeah, we'll band out. Uh, a little interesting. Yeah, I guess. I guess Jilly could have gone into a Diablo. A little interesting to ban that out with the Blaze already picked up. We'll see what Jailbait wants to do in response. I think it'll probably be a a support. Malfurion, maybe. Or uh, Alex Straza is also an option on this map for sure. Just, you know, with the power that Dragon Queen has and all that other good dragony stuff. Taking their time with this one. What do the stats tell me about this one? Death Knights have typically play picked up, let's see, in the later half, you know, Tychus is a possibility. They played ETC before. Uh, we'll see if they opt into something like a... Okay, yeah, I was going to say, they could also go with, with uh, Sonya, who hasn't been picked up yet. Uh, so nice ban there by Jailbait. Kind of forgot that she was up. Usually she's picked up a little bit earlier in the draft phase. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Hi, hi Peter. <laughs> Hope you uh, stay watching long enough to hear that. All right, so Death Knights we're probably looking to pick up a uh, probably support here, along with some more damage or bruiser. 
I mean, they don't really have to pick up a support now, though, right? Because they could wait until the last two picks. They might want to prioritize a, a their damage dealers uh, and tanks because it's not likely in this meta that Jailbait's going to go ahead and do the double support. They do go for the Lucio. And we'll see what else they want to pair with that. And yell at me. Dan, nice. All right, so Glan's a lot of sustained damage on the shrines. It's, <laughs> it's gonna be pretty difficult for the side of Jailbait to get to right now. Uh, I do kind of enjoy that that they like playing my Ev and their name Jailbait just because the Warden's Cage is basically a jail. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd expect to pick them to pick up like some burst damage, right? Like a a mage, um, like Janna or Kalis. Uh, and then, you know, they could actually flex their last pick with whatever they want. So we'll see what they decide to go with here. They might want to get, try to get some Dio on Gul'dan as well. Um, I guess Blaze can kind of do it, but it's a little bit difficult with the current composition to kind of sneak back there. Oh, we'll see. Ten seconds left. Kind of banning all their options here. <laughs> it's Janet ETC, alright. Uh, <laughs> this composition is pretty scary, honestly, because if they do go Warden's Cage, it's going to be a lot of ultimates used in the middle there. Uh, so, you know, Jailbait is going to try to bait people into jail, I guess. That's sort of literally the point. And I'm actually thoroughly, <laughs> thoroughly enjoying the composition they built and their team name. Uh, on the side of the UCF Death Knights, we have Leo picked up. And... Yeah, pretty solid pickup there. Being able to deal with the front line of ETC and Blaze. Uh, it's not as much CC, but I feel like with something like Entomb, it should be enough to keep Maya and Jaina off of the back line of Gul'dan, uh, which, if we're not careful, is really going to rip them apart. Cool, solid drafts. Um, <laughs> I just, just I, I like Jailbait's trap so much here. Um, so basically the plan with, with that team is they're going to try to do a lot of like zone control over the shrine and like force these fights. Uh, the Death Knights are probably not going to want to like do any hard engage on, right? De Death Knights with Gul'dan and Hanzo are going to try to sit back and poke from a distance. They really don't want to get thrown into jail with Blaze, Maya, VTC, Jaina. So they're going to be pretty careful about that to make sure that they don't get engaged on too hard. Um, it's going to be... I think they do have the tools to disengage, or they will, once they hit 10, uh, with Horrify and Johanna's Blessed Shield. Leo's probably... I would expect it to be an Entomb, just so that they have that additional control that they need to get out of jail, hopefully free, uh, when, that, <laughs> when that composition comes online. So on the side of Jailbait also, uh, you know, it's... With the, with the hard engage team, it's kind of on them to force the fights and get the picks that they need, because if they don't take any action, the side of Death Knights are just going to poke them in pieces. So it's going to be a fun game, I think. All right, so we're going to go ahead and introduce the teams here. On the left, in blue, we have Jailbait. We have H2O playing ETC, Joe DiMaggio playing Maev, Stormkiller on Stukov, Galaxy on Janna, and Junkrat playing Blaze. That's going to get confusing. <laughs> on the right, the red side, we have the UCF Death, Death Knights. I'm just going to call them the Death Knights because I really can't do the first part. We have Rook playing Johanna. We have Jaxter playing Lucio. We have Snipe playing, uh, appropriately, Hanzo. We have Ashbash playing uh, Gul'dan. And we have, who's that? That's Kodiaks on Leo. All right, team's going to go ahead and just do the kind of standard at this point, mid lane poke fights. See who gets manages to get an advantage here. I don't expect, you know, I would expect the Death Knights to go ahead and opt into a four-man rotation after doing the fight here. Uh, I don't know. Jailbait might try to get some picks, uh, but definitely the wave clear is on the side of the Death Knights for this early game at least. We're trying to go in on Johanna. Johanna can stop me low. Get a nice pull on the Hanzo. Power slide gets him. Just might go down. Go down if you have one more hit. Yep. Blaze manages to get that last hit. The counter kill coming out on Maev. So nice work with both teams. <laughs> Blaze continues to fight. Lucio is super low, but he's going to get away with just 150 ish health, it looked like. So teams trading pretty evenly there, not anyone coming out uh, coming out ahead. ETC actually rotated pretty quickly down to the bot lane to pick up a minion wave, so there's a slight XP lead for Jailbait right now. 
teams move into lanes after that fight. Um, I'm actually like, really surprised it was super even. Blaze versus Leo is going to be a little tough, uh, depending on if, as you can see there, if Leo manages to land a spooky hand, Blaze is going to have a pretty tough time sustaining through that. Uh, if Leo doesn't land the hand, then it's going to be a lot more even. So we'll try to keep an eye on, on that uh, matchup up there. It's just one of me though, so it might be a little tough. So we're looking at the team. Looks like Diablite has opted for the four-man rotation, going ahead and clearing up the main wave spot with Janna's wave clear. So they have a slight tempo advantage, but XP is so even, it doesn't really not making a huge difference just yet. The only being ahead in these rota rotations, though, we're trying to scout out the Death Knights. Johanna <laughs> walks up, gives everyone away, and no engage happening just quite yet. In the top lane, we just have our typical wet noodle fight, guys. Very exciting. <laughs> Alright, Jailbait going ahead and continuing with their four-man rotation. It looks like the, the Death Knights have opted to do uh, the standard, you know, 1-3-1 one, one, uh, lane setup just so that they stay even in XP. Both teams now pick up level 4. Uh, talent notes, uh, Stukov actually went for the, ah, the Fetish Touch quest. So this quest makes it so that he's basically able to cast his, his <laughs> Weighted Pustule, his Slow, a lot more frequently once it completes. Uh, so that should give a lot, ex lot more crowd control. We'll see what he opts into. There's a couple different things you could go with with that build. Uh, we'll see what he picks up at level seven. Should should help us out. Help us figure that out a little bit more. Trying activating up in mid. Teams trying to clear up the last bit of XP down in the bot lane. Janna keeping an eye on this bottom camp, going back for mana right before this shrine. So nice back timing there. Death Knights get scattered out, H2O doing a great job of uh, keeping it vision for his team. And now the fight over the shrine begins. Alright, not too much happening. The <laughs> top laners both going on to the shrine immediately as both teams move in here trying to gain an advantage. Yeah, as you can see, like, Jailbait has like a great amount of, of zone control here. Uh, Death Knights are trying to find an opportunity to enter, just trying to poke everyone down. Um, Sukov did go one good spread at level 4, so it's going to give him a lot more sustain. They're going to need to really make sure that they concentrate their, their you know, poke onto a single target, otherwise Sukov should be able to heal it up, no problem. Lee's getting a little low, trying to get a stun on Leo, but he is unstoppable. Johanna also in a little bit too deep. Go to unstoppable to get out of that situation. H2 knocks back Kodiak. He might just go down, but the stay on Leo is kind of crazy. Goes down to finally to Mayev there. 39 to 39 to 25. Yeah, the Devlet just needed one more uh, minion. A great work there by them. Blaze going ahead and soaking up the top lane, so I like that. Trying to get all the XP off of this first Punisher. Also looks like Maev is going down to the bot lane as well, so I like this a lot by Jailbait. Making sure that they get all of the XP on the map that the Punisher provides. Death Knight's responding by sending Leo up to the top, and just kind of leaving the bot lane for now, just making sure that they clean up this Punisher here. Nice work, fast clean, only really getting the walls, but that's, you know, kind of all you can really expect here. Level 7, t seven talents come out for Jailbait. We do have, okay, <laughs> we do have targeted excision at uh, level 7 for Stukov. Uh, I do <laughs> kind of like this. Uh, basically, with the weighted push kill build, you're able to, uh, if you if you are good at, at hitting the push kill on exactly one person and triggering it, you can basically increase your burst healing throughput by a substantial amount. What's the, what targeted excision does, this is a somewhat unusual talent in this build, uh, is it, it resets the cooldown of Stukov's passive uh, to five seconds if he only detonates it on one person. Looks like the Death Knights are going in for a gank here after Jailbait goes ahead and takes the camp. Suka pretty low. I don't know if he got that reset though, so he's in a little bit of trouble if he gets poked out here by Hanzo. Ah, uh, Hanzo just misses the snipe. EZC comes in and that Hanzo goes down. So that last hit on Suka not connecting and Hanzo goes down in return. Nice work by Jailbait, making sure that they get out of that with uh, with no losses and a camp. Slight level lead for Jailbait right now, about half a level, almost a, a, an entire level. So we're going to go ahead and take the siege camp to take the pace of this game. Yukov is the one who's <laughs> scouting out the death knights in the bush. 
Always have someone anchor for you guys. Uh, it's really important to be visioned in those camps because it's <laughs> it's really easy if you don't have anyone watching for the other team to just show up in that in that same bush and ambush you. So great work by Jailbait, making sure that their teammates are safe while doing the camps. Do come can also you know just put down the silence field on the camps so he can also contribute while being a ward for his team. This knight's going ahead, trying to catch back up in experience. Going ahead and taking this bottom. Uh, way of minions. Not too much happening right now. Team's just kind of waiting. Uh, and <laughs> gonna go ahead and try to get all the XP. Jillmate is gonna hit level 10 before this shrine phase. The next question is always gonna be, will the Death Knight also uh, go ahead and hit 10? We'll see. You know, I think that the shrine is not spawning quite yet, so there's still time. Uh, even if they don't hit level 10, there's still going to be plenty of time for them to catch up. Level 10s are coming out. We do have... <laughs> okay, it is Bunker. Uh, I was kind of hoping for combustion. But we do have Ring of Frost, and we have the Jail set up. So, Jailbait does have their Jail composition starting to come together. Yukov takes Massive Shove, uh, pushing away a single target. Uh, I do kind of like that, because there's only really going to be two targets that are really in his face. Uh, that would be Leo and Johanna. So, you don't really need the knockback from everything. So we're going to go ahead and take the Bruiser camp here. Leo has not scouted this out, although it is a little bit dangerous. Lucio is going to walk face first into this. So he has to be a little bit careful that he doesn't get caught out here. Right, little ta Ooh, nice Glorify coming up from Gul'dan. The <laughs> Garage comes out, separates the team. Nice to see on the Duke of, just not quite able to get out of that. That really, really nice Horrify. Um, <laughs> Death Knights just hit level 10, uh, and so that was a fight that they actually really did want to take. Um, <laughs> you know, that's what you get from hitting 10 at the right time and taking the right fight. But yeah, Horrify hitting all four people there, uh, and a Tomb coming out separating the team. There really wasn't much time for Stukov or anyone on the team really to react. So super nice play by the Death Knights. They, they do lose out on the camp. But it looks like they're going to be pretty safely in control of the Shrine. Or at least they're probably going to hit around 30 uh, before the team of Jailbait respawns. We'll see if Jailbait wants to take a fight. Two of their ultimates are down. EGC did go Mosh Pit. Um, I don't know if they know that Death Knights don't have any ultimates right now. Uh, Blessed Shield will be back up in 5, so if they want to take a fight, they have to do it very, sh very soon. I looked out on Johanna. Nice, we there. He's looking for a Mosh, it looks like. Uh, they're going to back up. Frozen Punisher is taken by the Death Knights, so they're not going to stick around. <laughs> Punisher jumps over. Oh, nice. Nice and tomb there. <laughs> Poor Zukov has nowhere to go. Trapped between his own wall and Zukov's in tomb. And the Punisher on him as well. Uh, so Zukov is going to go down there. I don't even think the other alt would have saved him. It's <laughs> Horrify comes out as well. Jaina in the wrong place at the wrong time. Easy season to down without his support. So this is going to be easily a fort for the side of Death Knights. A little unfortunate there. Um, Stukov getting caught was really, really, I think just like, you know, maybe slightly bad positioning, but also just bad luck. That was a really nicely placed in Tomb, ensuring that the only place Stukov could go would, would be to the Punisher and, like, you know, back into the Tomb. So, real nice, real nice uh, <laughs> placement there by Cody X. Punisher gets baited over the wall, sets down one turret on this keep, uh, but other than that, Jailbait is going to clean that up, no problem. Jailbait now, Jailbait now down a level, going need to need to catch back up there. Um, I think it should be possible for them to catch back up before the next shrine phase, but if the Death Knights are able to get picks like... Okay, if my gets caught here, yeah. So she gets out, she sees that gank with four people and wants nothing to do with it. But yeah, it, you know, if Jailbait, all they need really needs to do, I think, is they need to, you know, like, relax a little bit and just soak back up to even talent tiers uh, and then, you know, take a fight either before or shortly after the shrine spawns. Uh, I think it's going to be on them. I, I, you know, I'm... Looking at the levels, I'm not quite sure if they'll be able to hit level 16 on the side of Death Knights before the next shrine. Uh, definitely a possibility. We'll see if the Jailbait are able to slow them down a little bit, make sure that they get level 13, maybe take a fight, you know, in beta camp. Blaze and Leo continue to just duke it out on the top lane. Clearly, not too much to report there. <laughs> Death Knights go ahead, paint up their siege camp in the mid lane. Go ahead and kind of 
you know, try to make have a push happen, but still is doing a nice job of defending that lane. Uh, the minions in the bottom are going unsoaked by both teams. I would like to see Jailbit pick that up a little bit, but I do understand their desire to clean up this Merc camp in mid lane. Go ahead and pop the talents up for you guys real quick. Uh, we do have Stuka with the Lingering Spine, so that's going to keep the Science alone longer instead of having the, uh, you know, the root potential. Big free standard stuff by the way. Diana is, is getting there with the uh, ice block trait that she's going to get. Around 10,000 out of 15,000 there. She only needs a little bit more to complete that. Nico is at 25 on his quest. Gul'dan completed the corruption quest. Uh, Hanta completed his level 1 quest as well. So uh, Death Knight's sitting pretty good with those level 1 talents all completed. <laughs> Hanta being, it comes with being a jerk. Uh, preventing ETC from mounting. <laughs> Uh, team's just kind of really just playing it passively. Um, Jailbait's really, but I think, you know, they're going to be behind on this next shrine phase if they don't do anything right now. So what I'd really like to see uh, is maybe trying to pick a fight before this shrine phase, because otherwise, Death Knights are going to have it uncontested. They are moving up to this siege camp. They, I, don't know if they, I don't know if they know that it's all five people there, so they're going to wait a little bit for their team. Uh, this is getting a little tense, though. The longer they wait, the closer they're going to be. The closer Death Knight's going to get to 16, and then the window of opportunity is basically closed at this point. So, Jill be going to go ahead and retreat, keep it, you know, a little bit more passive. I would expect them to give up this shrine. Yes, it looks like they're going to go ahead and push the top lane, going to go ahead and take their camp, have Blaze clean up the uh, other camp by Death Knights in the meantime. So, I like this. Uh, you know, it's. You know, there's still a fort in the bot lane, so there's not too much loss by this, but it's definitely, I think, smart to not give your opponent the chance to get even further ahead than they already are through the kills on the shrine. Uh, the 14 to 16 talent tier is just a really tough one to pick a fight on, so uh, props to Jailbait for doing some nice macro play, making sure that they can get up to 16. They do give up this fort, uh, but they should be able to defend the Punisher on the keep, so there shouldn't be too much of an issue there. Blaze continues to push. He's going to go ahead and come back right about now. Alright, now this is the Arcane Punisher, though, so it, it did get a little distracted by the fountain, but it is, it is coming. <laughs> Uh, this one's a bit of a problem though. It's it didn't quite manage to get 16. Blaze was trying to get the last bits of experience up there in the top lane, so it is level 17 and 2, level 15 for this fight. Only for a little bit longer. Looks like Jelly's probably going to be able to clean up this Punisher real quick. Nice bait over on the side of ETC, pulling the Punisher towards the mid lane. I believe that the keep is still going to go down. The Arcane Punisher's attacks are super annoying, really good at sieging over here. ETC trying to get another engage. Jelly's a little bit far behind to make this happen, I think. Alright, all right. and ETC is going to go ahead and back up there. So, Jelly did lose a keep, uh, but they are, you know, they did catch up a bit in XP. They are about a level and a half behind. Uh, they aren't farther behind, uh, you know, staggering deaths on the shrine there might have been game. So nice work there by Jailbait to keep themselves in the game here. They're going to go ahead and try to get the siege camp. Got up a blaze. Death Knights are going as well. Might see a fight over this, but it doesn't look like they're going to pick anyone on either side. We all went back to the top lane. The top, the top fort did go down in the meantime, uh, getting that camp pressure going by blaze. So, you know... You did trade a keep for a fort, but you know, in the scheme of things, you <laughs> that's still pretty good. Uh, managing to get that map pressure out when you're that far behind. You're gonna head ahead and disrupt the backline of the Death Knights, just kind of preventing everyone from engaging right now. Jelly, I think they're really trying to set up for you know the wombo combo that their team needs. Death Knights are doing a really good job of making sure that that doesn't really happen. Uh, EZC is going in, gonna try to get this knock back. Uh, Horrify actually happened but got cancelled. The Horrify is going to be uh, back up now, but only really hits one person. Uh, Leo gets disengaged by, uh, <laughs> by Stuka there, uh, so no chance for the achievement to happen. 
Thumbier also went down as well. Uh, so there's those are actually two substantial cooldowns down on the side of the Death Knights. Uh, this is the chance for Jailbait to pick a fight. Uh, they are currently continuing to put on the map pressure though in bot lane, cleaning up those catapults. The next round is going to go ahead and be in mid, probably in a minute or so. Uh, we have Death Knights posturing up to defend this this little mini push. I was going to blink away, no problem. Okay, team's pushing up in the mid lane here. Ooh, okay, this is again the, the situation that Dearbit found themselves in on the 13 and 16 talents here. Uh, they are still behind, so the longer they wait, the more time Death Knight's going to have to get to level 20. Orify and Soundbear are going to be back up, so it's... You know, I really wanted to see them pick a fight. Uh, to just get that engage that they need and do, you know, the jail comp that they built. Uh, they haven't quite managed to get all the pieces together yet. Uh, just, you know, due to some good disruption by the Death Knights not letting any of that combo go off. Uh, but I, I think, you know, now is the time to fight and <laughs> um, Death Knights know that. Stukov gets caught by himself, um, actually keeping himself alive. Oh my god, some crazy healing from Stukov there. Uh, and finally, the jail comes out, the <laughs> Ring of Frost happens, uh, Warden's Cage comes out as well. They do manage to take down Lucio, and, you know, Luz <laughs> Stuka of their props, man, he did not go down during that, you know, crazy series of events. Um, not even, like, the, the <laughs> Dragon's Arrow, uh, and Tomb, and all the damage was still not enough to take him down. So nice play by Stu by Stuka, by Stormkiller there on Stuka. Uh, that was a fight Jailbait needed. Um, it definitely is going to be 20 soon, but they're not going to have their ultimates up for a little bit. So the, the Jailbait still has time to take this. Hanzo trying to steal some of the Shrine Monkeys away. <laughs> Didn't quite get get any. Got one, I think. So Death Knight's going to go ahead and give up this Punisher. Um, you know, Jailbait needs to be careful about the bottom lane pressure. Always a constant threat at this point. Blaze is going to go ahead and clean that up. They're going to wait a bit to make sure that Blaze has time to clean this up and then take the final minion. I like this a lot. Uh, we will also give Blaze time to clear up the camp in the bot lane. Uh, in the meantime, Death Knights are going to try and go ahead and get some map pressure. They are moving on to the shrine, so if they actually establish themselves too solidly here, you know, if, if Leo manages to get a good uh, and they're not able to pick off one of those shrine minions, which is going to be tough, but definitely. Possible. He just tries to get one, but didn't quite do it. Um, <laughs> Death Knights are creeping up, but no, it looks like Miami just went ahead and, and picked one off. Maybe Stukov did. Yeah, so nice attempt by Death Knights to get that, <laughs> get that Punisher. But what wasn't really going to happen, you know, when you're down, uh, what was it, 39 to 1? No. Punisher going ahead and seating up on mid. Uh, nice roots by the Punisher. Good job there, buddy. Uh, Johanna goes unstoppable actually to get out of there, so no problem yet. Punisher jumps on Leo, another target that has an easy way to get out. Let's see, I can try to go ahead and get Johanna's cooldown for Iron Skin. Iron Skin is back up. If she gets caught again, she just pop that. Get out. Punisher is going to go ahead and jump over the ball. Jailbait trying to seize this down. Nice silence on Johanna, but Blaze dashes in, does not get us done, and gets horrified back into the fort. He <laughs> drops the bunker trying to get away. He just might do it. The plus shield comes out, interrupts him. He gets healed up by Stukov, and I think he actually is going to get away, guys. <laughs> wow, that was some nice play, making sure that Blaze got out of there safely. Uh, nice work by Stormkiller again, and you know, <laughs> and by Junkrat on that blaze. Make sure he doesn't die there. Um, a lot of coordination with the using the, the bunker and the heals. Uh, Ring of Frost coming out. Uh, didn't quite get a kill, but definitely prevented any additional deaths on the side of Jailbait. Uh, with that, you know, with that push, they're actually back on even talent tiers. So the next few fights should be pretty interesting. Uh, <laughs> ETC grabbed Torbus, so. Uh, hopefully we see some good setups. You know, we can always do the classic: start the the mosh pit in a bush, and then slide on to the opposing team, uh, like my team did back in the playoffs. <laughs> it's always a good time. I don't know if you're still watching, but that's pretty fun. Uh, Lisa go ahead, go ahead and picks up. Okay, yeah, the percent healing and the ability to play the amp it up for longer with bonus track. So that's going to give them a lot of sustain uh, through the burst of the team of Jailbait.
Ultimate's back up on both sides now. See if either team wants to pick a fight before the next shrine phase. I'm not sure if they will. Uh, it's going to be passive, it looks like. Uh, Jailbait is actually pretty even in XP right now. Um, it looks like a lot of that came from minions, a little bit on the side of heroes, but, you know, being able to get with good minions, like, wow, yeah, the, the XP difference is basically entirely made, like, the difference there is basically entirely made up by minions, so, uh, Jailbait really just showing us the power that, uh, good <laughs> map control, even when you're behind, right? The, the worst thing, the worst case for them would have been that falling behind in that 13 to 16, and then later, uh, 16 to 20 talent tier, uh, and then, you know, basically losing the game to the snowball, but, like, really good work, making sure that they're able to control that a little bit. Alright, back in even talent tiers. We're, they're going to go ahead and try to steal that camp, the siege key, the bruiser camp, on the side of Death Knights. Let's see, Death Knights are busy with their siege camp, so I don't know if they're going to rotate up there in time. It doesn't look like they will. Jailbait's going to go ahead and get away free there. Alright, Shrine's activating up in 30 seconds. Uh, this Punisher is likely to decide the game. Both teams only have a keep there, uh, but if... You know, it's <laughs> one of those cases where if only one person goes down on each team, it's not, I don't think it's actually going to decide the game. Uh, either team, only missing, only down one member, should be able to, you know, clean up the Punisher without too much of a problem. We'll see if Death Knights are able to get the picks that they need to end the game. Uh, same with Jailbait. Jailbait's going to go ahead and let Death Knights set up on the Shrine a little bit. They're, they've needed to relieve pressure on the bottom lane, which is going to be a constant threat over on uh, the bottom lane for Jailbait. So they need to basically quickly and decisively win a fight. Uh, otherwise, that bot lane, uh, I think it's got a couple handfuls. Yeah, one right now uh, is going to push in on the core there. Ultimate's up for both teams. Looks like Jailbait is firmly established back on to the shrine. That's nice shrine to disruption. We have Johan and Leo out in the middle of Jailbait. Hanzo and, and Gul'dan are zoned out a little bit here. They're being constantly threatened by ETC. Uh, you know, but Suka again is taking quite a bit of poke damage. They go in, get the stun on Leo. Not too much uh, <laughs> in the way he's having. Now it goes in. <laughs> nice monster, pit, but the Dragon's Arrow takes out Blaze before the fight even starts. That is a nice Ring of Frost onto three people, but no follow up damage. Uh, the <laughs> the inner ring explodes, uh, catching one person, but no one goes down there. Jailbait actually ends up picking up the Punisher there. Uh, again, you know, just the the incidental damage from Janna, Blaze, and Stuka, just picking up the, pu the minions needed for the Punisher. They're really not going to get too much out of this. Jailbait needs to go ahead and clean up this bottom lane. There's three catapults here, uh, so I would expect, yeah, my has, has respawned. They're going to go ahead and deal with that. I think she'll be able to pick that up without taking too much in the way of core damage. If any. Meanwhile, the Punisher is not having a good time. Uh, it only gets... I don't think it gets any structure damage here. It is actually just going to try to punch heroes, and it takes down a wall. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, so despite picking up the Punisher, Jailbait still is not really finding the advantage that they need to push in a siege uh, to end the game. Uh, so, it, you know, the, based on the way this game has been going, I would expect both teams to just play it safe, play it passively, and just wait for the next uh, Shrine phase to come up. Looks like UCF Death Knights are going to go ahead and see, take the Siege Camp down here. Might have scattered it out, but it is five people on the side of Death Knights, with Jailbait trying to take their Bruiser Camp up top. Yeah, Hansa just takes that. Yeah, he just shreds that real fast. Uh, looks like all the quests have been completed. So it looks like there's a Prague Rock for ETC. Uh, and what is that one for my Bonds of Justice for my app. So getting some additional sustain, additional damage. Uh, I believe those were complete like a while ago at this point. So that's not too surprising here. Death Knights, I think, know that Jailbait is doing this camp. If Junkrat gets caught out here, he's likely to drop a bunker. Nice Horrify comes out, Dragon's Arrow as well. There comes the Entomb, and Blaze, and EZC go down there. No damage on the side of Junkrat, of Jailbait was there. Uh, so this is kind of an unfortunate, you know, invade. 
it's it's the case where you don't want to give up the camp, but you kind of have to. Uh, it looks like with those two deaths, the uh, Death Knights are going to go ahead and try to pick up the win uh, through the bottom lane right now. Uh, you know, without the front line of EDC and Blaze, it's going to be pretty difficult for Maev, Janna, and Sukov to defend this. Uh, so barring any sort of miracle play, it looks like Death Knights are going to end the game here. The Morn Kid comes out. Nice River Frost. It doesn't actually hit anyone, but it does get the bonus damage of Hanzo. He eventually falls. Uh, <laughs> Mayhem goes down in the meantime, though. Uh, so we have four people and a catapult sitting on the core of Jailbait. It looks like Death Knights are going to be able to uh, pull off the win here, but ETC and Blaze are up in 10 seconds. The Consume comes out, silencing Janna. She can't do anything. Level 20 pickup there from Leo, preventing uh, Janna from doing any action. Not even the Ice Block. <laughs> Two cup bullet pushes uh, Lucio back to the fountain, but it's not enough. Jillbait go up 1 0 in the series versus the UCF Death, Death Knights. Nice work, actually, by both teams there. Uh, Jillbait playing it real slow, making sure that they you know, don't fall too far behind, and taking, making sure that uh, they actually still have a chance in that game. So actually, really solid play by Jailbait. Jailbait. Um, the game ended pretty evenly. I think the only thing that really tilted the game in um, you know, the Death Knight's favor was really that pickoff in the top, getting that, uh, that mercenary camp. Okay, so we're running a little bit behind schedule, so I'm going to cut my talking short and go ahead and prepare the next game for you guys. So I'm going to you know, mute myself, put on some music, and we will be right back.